name is Kevin Deerling. I'm the VP of Marketing with Mellanox Technologies. It's uh, great to be here. We're going to talk about OCP networking done right, and that's really how our partners and Mellanox are working together to do all kinds of interesting things in the open compute project. Uh, and it's great to be here at the summit. I think this is my fifth summit that I've been at. We've really been around Mellanox since the beginning of the Open Compute Project. We're a gold member here. Uh, we're showing connectivity across many of the things that we saw today announced in the keynotes. So with our partners, we're supporting all kinds of different OCP networking. So we've made over 10 contributions on the adapter side, on the switch side. Uh, we did an open optics, which is a single mode silicon photonics platform that we introduced, as well as software. And I'll talk about some of those things today, but really it's exciting. We see things in the cloud. We see web scale companies. Uh, we've got Nokia here that's showing some of our gear in the telco space. So across all of these different connectivities and different mechanisms, whether it's the adapters, the cables, the storage, the servers, we're really connecting the clouds here at OCP. So one of the things that I wanted to focus on was part of the announcement. You heard Facebook talk about it today. And this is a joint uh, development that was done by Rackspace and Google. It's called the Zias platform. And it's based on the new power architecture from IBM. So this is a Power 9. What's interesting is this is the very first PCI Express Gen 4 server platform in the world. And you can go see that in our booth. Uh, PCI Express Gen 4 doubles the performance of the PCI Express bus. And so typically, you know, we've seen others that are leading, CPUs leading that space. But today, it's a power is the first one out that we can show the full-blown PCI Express Gen 4 connectivity. And that's really important because the card that we have there is an OCP card. It's dual 100 gigabit per second ports. And to do that and to saturate both links, we need PCI Express Gen 4. And so now for the first time, with a Gen 4 interface to that uh, server, we can actually sat saturate both of the 100 gig per second links. Now, some of you may be thinking 100 gigabits per second, you know, I'm still on 10. I'll show you in a second that we can use 100 gigabit per second today, that we're actually using that much bandwidth, and our customers are as well. So this is a great product. Come down, take a look at it. It's using our Connect X5, which is the latest version of our adapters. So, uh, and we've got an OCP NIC there. The other platform that you heard that was announced in the keynotes this morning, Microsoft talked about their Mount Olympus product. They showed that that project was using uh, both an x86 platform, so we have that in our booth. But they also talked about supporting the ARM platform, so the new ARM CPUs that are coming. So we have the Qualcomm Centric 2400 platform in our booth. And again, this is really interesting. This is the first CPU chipset that's based on 10 nanometer process. So when you look at the ARM processors that are out there, they're actually leading in the process steps. So again, you know, Moore's Law, people are talking about it slowing down. But it was sort of the, the playbook that Intel had when they got into the server space. They started with PC CPUs. That was a really high volume market, and it drove their process technology. And that allowed them to enter the server business, the server CPU business. What's interesting, when you look at the market today, and you say, what is driving semiconductor processing? What is the big volume driver? Well, guess what? It's not the PC, OK? It's not the PC anymore. It's not servers. Yeah. It's, the, it's those phones that everybody has in their hands. And so Qualcomm has really leveraged what they've done in that high volume manufacturing. And so they're first to market with 10 nanometer here, and that's exciting. So we had two great server platforms, one the first PCI Express Gen 4, and now here the first 10 nanometer uh, CPU with the ARM. And again, we're connecting that with our Mellanox Connect X5 100 gig Ethernet uh, connectivity here. So. And as I said, we can use 100 gigabit Ethernet today, OK? And the reason is simple. It's because faster storage needs faster networks. And if you look at these NVMe drives, the latest, greatest versions of the NVMe drives, it takes just three of those in a server to saturate 100 gigabit per second link. 
And we can do that with uh, NVMe over fabrics. We can do that with Microsoft Storage Spaces Direct. Uh, really, any of these different technologies, storage technologies, software-defined storage technologies, can take advantage of this faster network. Um, this was actually from a presentation that Microsoft gave where they were using a technology that we have called Rocky. Rocky is RDMA over converged Ethernet. Uh, it's really a transport protocol stack implemented in hardware. And what we saw here was that when we ran the storage spaces direct, we got half of the bandwidth than when we ran it with Rocky and without Rocky. Okay, so without Rocky, we got half the bandwidth. But what was more interesting wasn't just the bandwidth, but why we were limited, bandwidth limited. So we got less than 50 gigabits per second with, uh, without Rocky. And when we turned Rocky on, we got 96 gigabits per second of throughput. And the reason was is because we chewed up all the CPU cores running the transport protocol stack. We, develop, we develop, or dedicated half of the CPU cores to running the protocol stack to move the data back and forth. When we turned on Rocky, not only did we get 2x the bandwidth, but the CPU utilization went down near zero. So all of those cores became available to run the application. And still today, you know, uh, the most expensive part of the server infrastructure is, is not our NIC. Uh, it, it's actually the CPU and the memory subsystem. And so you want that to be focused on running your application, not on just moving the data. So today with uh, the Connect X5, and which this is the Connect X4, this was, work was done on the Connect X4. With the Connect X5, we've even added more acceleration features so that we can do NVMe over fabrics completely offloaded into hardware using this Rocky capability. So when we look at the future of storage networking, today you've got these NVMe uh, drives but one of the key things, and you heard it today in the Facebook keynote, where they were talking about disaggregated resources. So I want my CPU, and I want my storage, and I want to scale those on different axes. I want to be able to increase, depending on what my workload is. Some of them might be very CPU intensive, and some of them might be very storage intensive, and I want to be able to scale those independently. NVMe over fabrics is the first new storage protocol in the last 20 years. Okay. And it's really important because it runs over Ethernet. It allows you to share the NVMe drives that are inside of these servers. So now you don't care whether the storage is direct attached in your server or it's in a server a thousand meters away in a giant hyperscale data center. You can go get the data and bring it into your machine with extremely low latency. Now, if you run over a traditional network, uh, in the old days, you know, that would have been Fiber Channel or iSCSI or something. The overhead of that, you really didn't care if you were running on a hard disk drive, spinning rust, I call it, because it took seven milliseconds to get your data. Today, these NVMe drives can deliver data in less than 100 microseconds, and we'll see that go to less than 20 microseconds with uh, newer versions. And so what you need here is something that delivers very, very low latency, we're doing today over you know, less than 10 microseconds of added latency across the network. So you really don't care whether the data is in your box or in a box that's halfway at the other end of the data center. We did this performance over uh, two 25 gig links using Rocky. We got you know, something 1.3 million IOPS. We can do this today over 25, 50, and 100 gigabits per second. Um, the key advantage here is that you're doing this over a converged infrastructure. So you're, you're doing hyper-converged infrastructure in the cloud, and you really aren't having a dedicated fiber channel SAN anymore. There is no fiber channel in the cloud. It's, it's not there. This is the future, and we'll see this go into enterprise applications as well. So the other key thing that we did here at this show, we first uh, basically started talking about this last year was the disaggregation of the switching platforms. So instead of buying a black box where you got your software and your hardware all at one you know, purchase point from one vendor and you were locked in, and that vendor's roadmap, you said, well, I need these new features in our software. I need to be able to do MLAG or whatever it might be. Uh, you couldn't get it because that might not have been their priority. What we've done is actually take the hardware and decoupled it from the software. 
So today you can get uh, the Microsoft Sonic operating system. And so we did an announcement. Microsoft talked about that. That is now in production. It's GitHub. We've had this running in our labs in production. Uh, it's running in production environments. So it's a very solid offering. Cumulus Linux, they're here. They're a great partner. We're deploying in a ton of different applications uh, with Cumulus. We have our own operating system that if you're looking for certain things, and that may be the best fit. Uh, Metaswitch is another partner, and OpenSwitch, which is the new version of open source, so we're excited about that and working with those guys. Really the enabling function of a lot of this is at the low level, and this is some of the things that we've contributed through OCP. So if you look at ONI, which is the open network install environment, and SI, which is the switch abstraction interface, that lets you take all of this upper level network operating systems and run over whatever silicon you want. Okay? So it frees you up from having to choose your silicon and your software at the same time. You can take the best of breed of any of those. And in one sense, that's dangerous for a company like ourselves because it means that we need to be better at a hardware level. And it's something we bought into and we've actually contributed all of our software, even our operating system in terms of the low level uh, development kit. So the software development kit, the SDK, we actually pushed that into Linux open source. And if you were at the keynote this morning on the panel session, you heard Red Hat talking about switch dev. When you write to a network operating card, you write to a NIC, you don't write to a Intel NIC or a Broadcom NIC or a Mellanox NIC, you write to NetDev. What we're doing is the same thing for switches. You'll write to switch dev. It's upstream, it's part of Linux. If you go download the latest kernels, you can run that on our switches. And uh, there was a call to action from Red Hat to say, hey, that's great. We're happy Mellanox is doing that. We hope other people will do that. So we've done that as part of uh, really our embracing of open platforms. What it means is that we need to be able to compete at a very high level on other features, not uh, by locking in vendors, but we need to deliver better performance. So one of the other things that was announced this morning was the Microsoft Olympus platform. Uh, you can see that both in our booth and you can see it running in the Microsoft booth. We're connecting that with the Spectrum switch running the Sonic operating system. So this is an x86 platform using our Connect X4 adapters that uh, can do 100 gigabit per second and 50 gig as well. So that's, you should go see at the Microsoft booth. Um, to talk a little bit about what we're doing with Cumulus today, you know, I think both companies benefit from the relationships that we have with each other. We're better with Cumulus and Cumulus is better with us. We give them best in class performance, better buffering, you know, higher ability to scale in terms of the number of routes that we have in the network, better power consumption. And they give us all kinds of things like automation and overlays and integration with SDN controllers, cloud orchestration and provisioning tools. So together, the two of us are actually really strong. We've got a ton of customers that are uh, deploying today at scale for second tier cloud. So companies like Medallia, for example, is a cloud company here locally that's using Cumulus. So when we look at the reasons that we're willing to make this uh, competition, just we say, we'll open up our software and we'll compete on the hardware. These are some of the key areas. You know, I talked about some of these last year. But we're really seeing this now in the market. So when you look at the packet forwarding rates, uh, still today we're 4.76 billion packets per second. And if you look at, do the math on a minimum packet size for a 32 port 100 gig switch, that's what you need. Otherwise you're gonna start dropping packets when you get a bunch of small packets coming in. In terms of congestion management and in terms of fairness, Really all of these things are the reasons that people are adopting our platform and we let them decide which software they want to use on top of that platform. So today we're scaling our business in the Ethernet switch space. Uh, definitely come by, you can take a look. We've got a couple of interesting switches. One of those is a half rack width switch that has 16 ports called the SN2100. It's great for very dense environments and uh, being able to do fault tolerance in one U. Um, you know, I talked about the ability to have 
you know, zero packet loss, which has to do with not dropping packets when you shouldn't, okay? Here, this is one of the Tali reports that we talked about, the predictability associated with this, really important for certain applications. I'll talk about some high-frequency trading applications where we know that's important to our uh, customers there. So predictability, being able to pass what's called RFC 2544. In the old days, people would have put up a billboard if somebody else was dropping packets. Uh, we encourage you to go test your switch. You're dropping packets if you're not using us. So really across the scope of the performance spectrum, whether it has to do with congestion management, fairness, uh, avoidable packet loss, and latency, we think we have significant advantages across this platform. You can get this from you know, the spectrum platforms across a range of switches. Come see them in our booth and uh, take a look at this. One thing that I want to highlight in particular here is the latency. There really isn't a low latency switch anymore besides for this switch, the spectrum switch. So if you look at some of these new offerings, uh, there's always a trade-off between programmability and latency. We have a really programmable environment, and you can actually recirculate the packets. So the more you want to do, you're going to add latency. But we came at it, first of all, with through a single pass that we can do two different lookups, and we achieve this cut-through latency across all packet sizes. So cut-through latency means we start transmitting the packet before we've received the whole thing. So we looked at the header. We figure out which port it's going to go out. We figure out how fast it's going. We do something called smart cut-through. If we're receiving it at a 25 gig port and sending it out a 100 gig port, we have to wait to receive three quarters of the packet before we start sending it out. That we call smart cut through. Our competition here, you can see, uh, doesn't do that. If you configure your switch with different speeds on that switch, you're going to do store and forward. So where is that important, that latency? Uh, one of the areas where it's really important is in this financial applications. So if you're doing high frequency trading uh, and you need ultra low you know, latencies and you need predictable performance and you need a tight performance so you get fairness between all of the ports. It's not fair if you're telling different people different information about what's happening in a trade. You know, when people detect that in a trading environment, uh, arbitragers start to make billions of dollars because you shouldn't do that. So today we're really eliminating a ton of the forward error correction, because of our lower bid error rates, we're delivering extremely low latencies. We're using PTP. Uh, we're partnered closely with Cumulus here that delivers all of the things that we need. So with that, uh, I'll wrap up and just say, come visit us in our booth. It was kind of exciting this morning when I was uh, at the keynotes, and I heard Microsoft and Facebook and others talking. Pretty much, you can go see everything that was presented in the keynote. So the, the, you can see the Qualcomm server, you can see the IBM server, you can see the uh, Microsoft Mount Olympus server in our booth, and you can see Sonic all running. So thank you very much. I encourage you to come by and take a look.